Hello my dear students. Good morning. Welcome back to your English class. Today we are going to analyze a poem from your English Junction textbook. In the bazaars of Hyderabad written by Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu is known as the Nightingale of India and this poem is written in the 19th century in order to capture and direct every indian's attention to the bazaars of hyderabad basically it is an attempt to advise all indians to buy and use indian products and a part of the larger boycott movement sarojini naidu ezhudiya oru kavithayana in the bazaars of hyderabad ഇന്ത്യൻ ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻസ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റിൽ സ്വദേശി മൂവ്മെൻ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു പ്രസ്ഥാനം ഗാന്ധിജിയുടെ നേതൃത്വത്തിലുള്ള നേതാക്കൾ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ആ പ്രസ്ഥാനത്തിനോട് ആ പ്രസ്ഥാനത്തിനോട് സഹകരിച്ച് സരോജിനി നായിഡു എഴുതിയ ഒരു കവിതയാണ് ഇൻ ദ ബാസാസ് ഓഫ് ഹൈദരാബാദ് അതായത് വിദേശ വസ്തുക്കൾ ഉപേക്ഷിച്ചിട്ട് സ്വദേശമായിട്ട് നമ്മുടെ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്ന വസ്തുക്കൾ മാത്രം ഉപയോഗിക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതായിരുന്നു ബോയ്ക്കോഡ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ ലക്ഷ്യം സോ ഹിയർ ഇൻ ദിസ് പോയം സരോജിനി നായിഡു ഈസ് അഡ്രസ്സിങ് ഓൾ ദ വ്യൂവേഴ്സ് ടു ദ ബാസാസ് ഓഫ് ഹൈദരാബാദ് ആൻഡ് ഷി ഈസ് ഡിറ്റേറ്റിംഗ് ദ തിങ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് സോൾഡ് ഇൻ ദ ബാസാസ് ഓഫ് ഹൈദരാബാദ് ഓക്കെ Let's start our poem. What is mean by bazaars? Bazaars mean by a marketplace where we get all the goods. So now the poet is asking all of you to come to bazaars of Hyderabad. Let's go. Let's discuss the first stanza of the poem. What do you sell, O A merchants? Richly your wares are displayed, turbans of crimson and silver, tunics of purple brocade, mirrors with the panels of amber, daggers with the handles of jade. The poem begins with the poet's question to the merchants about what they are selling. She says that the goods are displayed nicely to attract the buyers the merchants reply that they are selling crimson and silver colored turbans purple brocade tunics mirrors with the amber frame and daggers with the handles made of jet so in the first stanza the poet is asking the questions to the merchants in the bazaars of hyderabad what what they are selling and the merchants are replying that they are selling crimson silver colored turbans purple brocade tunics mirrors with amber frame and daggers with handles made of jet now look what are these things what is mean by turbans of crimson and silver crimson means a dark red color so the merchants are selling turbans with a dark red and silver color and tunics what is tunics tunics means a long sleeveless clothes similar to a kurta tunics of purple brocade as you know brocade is a rich silk fabric with raised patterns in gold and silver so the merchants are selling crimson and silver color turbans then purple brocade tunics and there are also mirrors with the panels of amber amber means a kind of sticky thick liquid that is produced by some trees and this becomes hard over many years and forms amber amber is usually yellowish orange in color so the mirrors with the, their panels are decorated with amber and also daggers daggers means swords or knife with the handles of jade jade means a dark green semi precious stone 
so the daggers handles are decorated with jade so these are the things that the merchants are selling in the bazaars of hyderabad okay let read it again what do you sell o a merchants richly your wares are displayed turbans of crimson and silver tunics of purple brocade mirrors with panels of amber daggers with handles of jade let's move on to the second stanza what do you weigh o a vendors saffron and lentil and rice what do you grind o a maidens sandalwood henna and spice what do you call o a peddlers chessmen and ivory dice so in the second stanza the poet visits the vendors the maidens and the peddlers then she asks the vendors what they are weighing for sale the vendors are weighing something for sale and they reply that they are weighing saffron lentil and rice then the poet asks the maiden girls what they are grinding and their reply comes that they are grinding sandalwood henna and spices and now the poet saw the peddlers and they were crying loudly for their sale and they said that they are selling chess men and dice made from ivory for the game of chess so in the second stanza the poet visit three different salesmen in the bazaars of hyderabad and they are vendors maidens and the peddlers vendors are weighing saffron lentil and rice and the maidens are grinding sandalwood henna and spices and the peddlers are crying for selling chess men and dice made from ivory for the game called chess so in the second stanza the poet is meeting the poet is meeting three different type of salesmen in the bazaars of hyderabad okay okay dear children let's look at the meanings of the different words given in stanzas 2 it was given in page number 108 vendors means as you know the person selling things on the street then saffron as you know it is in malayalam it is called kungumam then lentil lentil is a small green orange or brown seed that is dried and used to make soap then there are peddlers and peddlers are persons who carry and sell small things on the road side so here in this stanza you can see that the peddlers are selling chessmen and dice made up of ivory what is ivory ivory means the things which is made up of uh, tusk of an elephant uh, that means ana komb ana komb kondu undakuna sadhanangal app ivadathe chessmenum dice um undaki irikkunna it is made up of ivory so that it is very expensive also okay so now we are moving to the next stanza what do you make o a goldsmiths bracelet and anklet and ring bells for the feet of blue pigeons frail as a dragon fly swing girdles of gold for the dancers scabbards of gold for the king so in this stanza the poet now goes up to the goldsmiths and asks them what they are making and what was their reply they replied that they are making bracelet anklet and ring to adorn us to become beautiful for the persons bracelet anklet and ring for the persons and they are also making bells to be tied to the feet of pigeon blue pigeons the gold goldsmiths are making bells for the feet of blue pigeons and that bells were as thin frail means thin and delicate these bells were as thin as a dragon fly swing so that means the bells are as thin as the light weight as the wings of a 
dragon fly and they are also making golden girdles girdles means belts or coats worn around the waist so they are making girdles for the dancers the girdles that the ornaments the dancers are wearing around the waist and also they are making scabbards for the king scabbards means cases to cover swords so they are also making scabbards for the king so these are the things that the goldsmith goldsmith means sorna panikkar ipo randa moonamada aayitta avaru poyidu poyittu kannna aalala goldsmith aanu and they were telling that they are making bracelet anklet and ring then they are making bells for the feet of blue pigeon and it was as light weight a light weight as a dragon flies wing and they are also making uh, girdles for golden girdles for the dancers and also the cover of the sword that is cabards for the kings okay now we are moving to the next just answer what do you cry o a fruit man citron pomegranate and plum what do you play o musicians sitar sarangi and drum what do you chant o magicians spells for the aeons to come so in this stanza the poet in the poem in the bazaars of hyderabad now ask the fruit sellers what fruits are they selling the poet described that the fruit men are crying that means as you know that the fruit sellers are making loud voice and they are crying out the names of the fruits when they are selling the fruits so that is why the poet is mentioned that what do you cry o a fruit man so what was their reply they answered that they are selling citron pomegranate and plum citron means fruits like lemons and melon citrus fruits etc and pomegranate and plum these are the fruits they are selling then the poet ask the magi- uh, the musicians what they are playing there are musicians in the bazaars of hyderabad and they are playing some music and uh, the poet ask them what they are playing and what was their reply they said that they are playing sitar sarangi and drum some musical instruments then the poet so magicians and the magicians are chanting they are speaking very low voice they are chanting and that is why he asked what do you chant o magicians but that is why the poet she asked what do you chant o magicians and what was their reply they just spelling for the aeons to come aeons means a very long period of time that means uh, a divine power who would help him perform his magical tricks so they are chanting to uh, chanting for a long time to come that means their magical power should be successful their magical trick should be successful one okay so in this in this stanza we can met fruit men magicians musicians etc and the fruit men are selling citron pomegranate and plum and music- uh, musicians are playing sitar sarangi and drum then magicians are chanting spells for the aeons to come okay and now we are moving to the last and final stanza of the poem okay what do you weave o ye flower girls with tassels of azure and red crowns were the brow of a bride groom chaplets to garland his bed sheets of white blossoms new gathered to perfume the sleep of the dead in the last stanza of the poem the poet asks the flower girls what they are weaving with azure and tassels azure means a bright blue color like the sky and tassels means a bunch of threads tied together into a round ball at one end and hung as a decoration on clothes flags curtains and so on 
so the poet asked the girls flower girls what they are making what they are weaving with azure and red tassels then the flower girls replied that they are making garlands for the bride and the bridegroom to beauty to beautify their bed for the wedding night chaplets means feather uh, wreaths of flowers that means uh, their bed is decorated with garlanded with flowers for the wedding night and they are also making sheets of newly brought white flowers for use on the dead man's grave for fragrance for smell clear new garnered garnered means freshly gathered new garnered means freshly gathered new gathered so in the poem that i had shown you the spelling of the word garnered is referred as new ga uh, new gathered that means it's a freshly gathered flowers for ch uh, chaplets means wreath of flowers that is used for perfume to smell the sleep of the dead person that means used on the dead man's grave for smell or fragrance okay so okay my dear children this is a explanation of the poem in the bazaars of hyderabad sarojini naidu the poet is met different sellers in the bazaars of hyderabad and she is asking what they are selling and they are replying the goods they are selling there first she met merchants and they are selling turbans of crimson and silver tunics of purple brocade mirrors with the panels of amber and daggers with the handles of jade then she met with the vendors and they are selling saffron lentil and rice then the maidens maidens are grinding sandalwood henna and spice then the peddlers they are selling chessmen and dice with made up of ivory then she met with gold uh, gold smiths and they were making wristlet and anklet and ring and also they are making bells for the feet of blue pigeons and that bells were as thin as a dragon flies wing and they are also making girdles of gold for dancers and scabbards for gold scabbards made up of gold for the king then she met with fruit men the fruit men are crying and what they are crying they are selling citron pomegranate and plum the musicians and they are playing sitar sarangi and drum and the magicians are chanting they are murmuring spells of aeons to come at last the poet met with flower girls and they are using tassels of azure and red and with that they are making crowns for the brow of a bridegroom chaplets to garland his bed and also they are making sheet of white blossoms new garnered to perform the sleep of the dead that means for the grave of the dead person dead people uh, for getting the smell of good fragrance for the grave of the dead people they are making new garnered flowers a sheet of white blossoms new garnered flowers okay so this is the explanation of the poem in the bazaars of hyderabad this the poet sarojini naidu represents an indian market to give us a sense of the rich indian heritage nammude india de paramparyam വിളിച്ചോതുന്ന രീതിയിലുള്ള ഒരു ടിപ്പിക്കൽ ഇന്ത്യൻ മാർക്കറ്റിനെ കുറിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഡിസ്ക്രിപ്ഷനാണ് ഈ പോയത്തിലൂടെ സരോജിനി നായിഡു നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പിലേക്ക് വയ്ക്കുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് പോയം വാസ് ഹെർ പ്രൊട്ടസ്റ്റ് അഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ദ യൂറോപ്യൻ പ്രോഡക്റ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ് അപ്രീസിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് അവർ ഓൺ ഗുഡ്സ് ആസ് യു ആസ് ഐ ഹഡ്സ് സെറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ഓപ്പണിങ് ഓഫ് ദ ക്ലാസ് ഐ ഓൾറെഡി ടോൾഡ് യു ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് അഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് ദ പോയം ഈസ് സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് Uh, the boycott movement that means european products ne uh, protest cheyidite nammade our own goods nammade indian goods ne nammade sadhanangale appreciation cheyan venditulla oru 
poem kudiyana or poem kudiyana idu okay so this is the poem in the bazaars of hyderabad written by sarojini naidu okay my dear children let's wind up this section you have to read the poem at least two three times and go through the word meanings okay take care thank you